Hi everybody, welcome to Daily Deco. Uh, today's episode is sponsored by... Who's it sponsored by, Sean? Uh, you, ma- right, you make a decision. Your right ear. My right ear. My yeah. right ear is currently covered up by my headphones, so I can actually hear what Sean is saying. There you go. Um, but yeah, more about my right ear later. So, um, as far as interesting <laughs> Simply Scuba news, um, I don't know... Um, I, I haven't actually seen if anything new or interesting has uh, has sort of popped into stock. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do is on Sunday, I'm going to do a, a quick catch up of some of the interesting things that have arrived since uh, sort of basically the Christmas period. Um, because yeah, this is the kind of the time of year when interesting stuff usually tends to uh, to drop. Now, obviously, this diving season is a little bit different than uh, it kind of usually is. Normally, how it is, is we get um, something like Dima in like October, November time, and then that's when the brands, they announce all their new shiny uh, sort of upgrades and new sort of pieces of equipment, and then um, everyone gets all excited, and then they make it to the uh, to the dive centers around sort of February, March kind of time. So uh, so this is when sort of the new 2021 sort of stuff should be dropped dropping um, but yeah it's kind of a weird year and uh, I think some of the brands are thinking oh we've got this really exciting watch and who's it something gadget um, we don't really want to release it now because there's going to be less hype because not as many people are scuba diving so I think they're keeping a lot of their stuff kind of like pigeonholed and uh, just kind of like yeah that, that'll keep until like next year when uh, when people are actually sort of properly scuba diving yeah. again so um yeah but on sunday we're going to be doing i say we i am going to be doing a, a video on um yeah sort of new exciting gear that uh, may have kind of slipped under your radar something worth kind of looking at uh, so stay tuned for that cool. uh, as far as underwater news uh, a few bits and bobs uh, came across our um our eyes. The first one, this one comes from Connecticut, is it? Yes. Uh, yes. And this is, so there's an aquarium in Connecticut uh, and it's called the Mystic Aquarium. Nothing Ooh. mystical about it as far as I know. Um, I think it's just what it's called. But basically they had plans to import, I think it was five beluga whales from another aquarium and um, it was basically for a like a research project um, because they want to do some research. I'll talk more about that later. But the um, the move and the like reallocation of these beluga whales has been uh, sort of put on halt because of a, a lawsuit from uh, Friends of Animals, um, and they filed a lawsuit uh, a lawsuit in September, basically saying that uh, because you're taking these whales from their like social group, uh, it's going to cause like untold and unbeknownst. Uh, sort of harm and stress um, to just kind of move them to another aquarium and um, and the the aquarium basically says okay yeah no we're not going to um, sort of go forwards with this until the uh, sort of courts have made their decision um, because yeah we don't want to stress them out because yeah they're not really doing it for like entertainment purposes or anything they're doing it for research purposes they want to um, they want to kind of do some non-invasive studies on these beluga whales, kind of how they interact with one another. And then they want to be able to sort of learn from that and um, sort of think about that for like dwindling uh, sort of wild populations. So um, hmm. yeah, they're, they're very sort of open and honest and just say, okay, yeah, we'd like these five, but um, but yeah, we're not going to, uh, we don't want to be the bad guys, obviously. We don't want to hurt the whales. Um, and um, yeah, we just kind of want to um, sort of study them. Um, not that's invasively, weird. obviously. Well, Aquariums aren't normally like that, <laughs> so that's good. We'll just take no, that point. They um, they say that at the moment they have uh, they have three beluga whales, um, and they live in a seven hundred fifty thousand gallon outdoor habitat, uh, which the aquarium calls. I like the way they say the aquarium calls the uh, the largest in the United States. Um, so I, I don't really know how big 750,000 gallons is. Uh, I don't know if that's particularly big. It's definitely smaller than the ocean. Yeah. But um, by, by the way that they kind of talk about it, it's, it's a large enclosure, but um, but who knows? And yeah, they're, um, they're hoping that um, this research could actually sort of help boost endangered and depleted beluga whale populations uh, by kind of studying them. So yeah, it's kind of one of those things of, is it a necessary evil? Um, if these uh, sort of belugas, they're already in captivity, uh, maybe they can't be returned to the wild. 
is it kind of socially acceptable to be able to sort of transfer them, um, not necessarily backwards and forwards, but at least kind of once? And, um, or is it kind of one of the things where it's like, well, maybe we should, if we are transporting them because they are a social species, um, should we transport all of them sort of all at once so you're not sort of separating mm. these um, sort of social ties? Um, who knows? Um, we'll find we'll out. Tell. With the yeah, we'll find out. I, where it doesn't actually say well, when the lawsuit do. is. This article. Um, so documents were filed in federal court on December twenty okay. third, um, but they're saying that they will not import the whales before March thirty first um, to allow time for a judge to decide in the lawsuit. Um, <clears throat> so hopefully we'll find out. Hopefully it'll make the uh, the news. But uh, yeah, it's. It's one of the uh, sort of interesting things ever since sort of uh, Blackwater um, was Blackfish, released. Blackfish, what called? There's Blackfish, that's it, not Blackwater. I have no idea what Blackwater is. Sounds that's like a video game. Other, obs- like a Yeah, it's Assassin's probably some obscure Creed. video game or movie. <clears throat> some sort of pirate um, game. But um, yeah, there, there's a lot of eyes on this kind of uh, sort of transfer of uh, sort of marine species. Um, I reckon they should do... Team. Sorry. They should do a... Um, hmm. Like you can only move animals a certain amount of time. So obviously, the, the so they're in Ontario at the moment. If they get the they get the okay to go to Connecticut, mm. they go there. They have to spend X amount of years there, and then depending on how old they are, what they have to do is if they basically they can be moved one more time, but that's to mm. like a sanctuary or something. So they have yeah, that's like a, they're Once here, they're, they're here, and then they 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 go here to you know, to to live out the rest of their life sort of thing. So give it a time frame. So then you can do the research. As long as it's genuine research, it's like, oh, we're researching them. Do you want to buy some tickets to see us research them? (laughs) Yeah, it is tough. I know in, um, um, oh, David Attenborough um, sort of, Sort of said recently. Has he been sold that, to Connecticut? He's is he at the uh, Mystique Aquarium? Yeah, but he, he, yeah, but he's only allowed to move to one other aquarium before <laughs> he can't. Before, um, before. <laughs> no, he said um, he said in a uh, like a press release or something recently that um, yeah, it, it's not nice, but a lot of kind of zoos and aquariums are a necessary evil for some species, um, and um, yeah, it's. It's not a nice situation, but it's kind of the best situation in certain cases. Um, because, yeah, these these species, if they are kind of left to their own in the wild, then, yeah, they're just going to disappear in a couple generations. Um, whereas if we do hold a certain sort of number in um, captivity, then at least we can sort of continue those bloodlines until we can release it back into the wild. Yeah. It's... It's hard. It's it's one of those um, basically one of those arguments that you can always go backwards and forwards on. I think what they have to do, what zoos have to do, is they mm. uh, or, or there should be a depletion of zoos and more conservation areas. So it's more natural. Mm. It's not tailored for you to view this animal and you know it to entertain you and for you to go then to go and have a hot do- you know what i mean it, it's entertainment yeah what they should yep. do with zoos is obviously they got to keep the animals but you, you you have animals that are um how it's like Van- vancouver aquarium you know it's a, it's a fine line so they're an aquarium but they're also a marine protection so they they also get mm-hmm. a lot of animals and mammals from their own local <coughs> waters that can't physically go back into the water because yes. they'll just die so then uh, again they they have to go in there but they've they, they've made it where it's all very local so the animals that the majority mm. or they've had to basically because there's been lots of lawsuits there but a lot of their um a lot of their animals that they have now or they're getting now are just local to the area um so i think yeah. that might be a quiet thing but yeah if if what zoos have to do they have to make it all about conservation so it's not about you know seeing a show at 10 o'clock while Flipper, you know, balances a, a man on his head whilst writing yeah. uh, a, a, the latest Marvel movie. Uh, <laughs> you don't want that, you know, but you... you, you that want... would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'd go and see that. <laughs> uh, all right. 
people like you, Mark. Go, go see some spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I think I think that's what they need to do. They need to start phasing out. Like it's like when I went to Vancouver Aquarium, they they had like the seals and stuff, and they had walruses, which are, again they're in that that sort of BC waters. Local and then it's just species, like, oh, this is yeah. good. And it's like, oh, here's some penguins. And I'm like, hold on. And then you look at yeah, the penguin no, enclosure. You're like, no, it. you need to you need to stop doing that sort of thing. And then you need, yeah, mm. you, you just need the conservation. And then again, just rather than making it um, about um, entertaining people, make it about education and teaching younger yeah. generations. And like the money that you get, yes, like for entry, yes, it goes towards the education, you, you know, the staff that are educating, but then it also goes yeah. towards the, the general maintenance and the feeding of yeah. obviously animals. And then yeah. It goes towards like a conservation charity, so like a a, 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 a breakdown. You know, there's no Starbucks in there. There's no fancy corporate other other. You know, or if there is, there they there are like a like almost like a non-profit within that building. So they don't. So say there is a Starbucks, all the profit that they make goes to the charity, or fifty percent of it has to go to a conservation charity, sort of thing. You know, I think that's what they've got mm. to. They've got to take the tack, and then if they eventually do that, like zoos that get bad reps, it, 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 they, they will it, it will phase out basically, and it'll be like, well, actually, no, they're doing a good yeah. thing, you know. Big, mm. big. The only problem you've got is, is obviously <clears throat> big managers or whatever. They want to obviously hit profit margins and stuff, but that's that's where you've got to change the way the business is from a, a profiteering entertainment to a, no we're just we're just here to help these animals that are here now and to educate future generations mm. and why it's so important that we need to look after them boom yes. yeah that's it sean has solved the uh, the, right. the crisis yeah <laughs> i want a statue of me in every <clears throat> single conservation <laughs> place i don't want dolphins to do backflips over it <laughs> oh, done. For money. For, for money, yes, of course. <laughs> for my Patreon. Once they write a comic book movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so the, um, t- the next news story um, comes from South Korea, uh, the good Korea. Um, I can't go to North Korea anymore because I won't come back. Um, so... Um, <laughs> So they have this this huge aquarium, and um, I think until like February, they're um, they're doing underwater like New Year's celebration dives. Um, so divers are um, sort of going into the water, and that's nothing new. You often see sort of divers go in. They they do a little show, or they're like feeding the fish or cleaning their tank or whatnot. Um, but what these divers are doing is uh, sort of twice a day they are dressing up in a traditional costume called hanbok, and um, what they're doing they're doing a little um, not a song and a dance because you can't really sing, uh, but they're doing a little show um, which is to celebrate. New Year's so um, yeah they're, they're all kind of dressed up which looks kind of weird because they're still wearing their BCD but like under these um, this light sort of clothing and stuff the weight belt is on the outside I presume for safety and of course they got their, uh, their sort of tank on the back and whatnot but yeah, they're doing this uh, this little sort of dance, and they um, they sort of unfurl these uh, these kind of banners. Um, but instead of like traditionally, they're like sort of holding the banner, and then the the banner sort of rolls down. They've actually attached a float, which just looks to be like a, a pool noodle, kind of cut down one side, um, that's attached to the top. And as they release it, it sort of unfurls upwards, which is pretty cool effect. And um, yeah, they uh, they sort of do this for um, I don't know if it's crowds because I don't know what their uh, sort of lockdown measures are, but um, yeah, they're certainly doing it for uh, for people um, to uh, to see, and uh, yeah, it looks looks good fun. Uh, lots of bright colours. Uh, they're probably all right over keeps there. Me, keeps me quiet. Yeah, I can't remember. I presume I think South Korea have done it fairly well. That I side of the world say, yeah. seems to have handled it pretty <clears throat> pretty well, considering well better than us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they... They've eradicated when, it, and we're like, do you know what? Here's COVID-20. You're welcome. I You're think, welcome, yeah, world. I think I think when, when their general public are told kind of what to do, oh, you should do this and you shouldn't do that, um, they do it, whereas kind of over here, a lot of people think they're the exclusion to the rule, so they just do their own thing, and that's mm. why it's not going away. So, um, yeah. <laughs> but... Um, 
<laughs> one day, one day people will figure it out. Um, no, we won't. Yeah, they, um... Well, as I say, oh, survival actually... of the fittest, mate. Survival of the fittest. Don't say that, Sean. <laughs> I seriously, what they're gonna what, <coughs> have you ever seen the movie? It's not twenty eight. Is it twenty eight weeks later? The sequel to twenty eight days. One. They literally yeah, locked yeah. off the entirety of the UK. <laughs> said so and Idris Elba pretended to be an American military oh, officer did, did or he? something. Yeah, I think yeah. Yes, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Anyway, that's gonna happen to us. <coughs> oh, and then it ended up in France. Yeah, it did. <laughs> And then they've never made anyway. one since, which is a shame because that was quite good. That's got Jeremy Renner in it. Yep, yep, Hawkeye, and um, oh, I can't remember her name, the uh, the girl. But um, yeah, I didn't mind that. I think I saw that at the cinema. It was good. Yeah, <coughs> I enjoyed yeah. it. It's it's not the most happy of endings, um, but yeah. No, we share <laughs> the love. We give the virus to Paris. There you go. It's a love story. There you go, guys. I, lo I love the fact that there's all this like doom mongering about the new like the UK, the British coronavirus, and um, and then everyone in the comments like, actually no, it was just the Brits that like discovered it and sequenced it. Uh, it didn't actually originate in the United Kingdom. It actually originated in um, South Africa, I believe. Um, it's just like, but actually we have like the best um, like DNA sequencing uh, people and technology apparently. I was like, really? I had no idea. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, well done us. No, it's all because of me. They love my DNA <laughs> and my sequencing. You have just so much of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's oozing out. <coughs> oozing out DNA. Uh, anyway, let's um, get back to the anyway. <laughs> Yeah, today's uh, today's episode of Daily Deco is sponsored by my right ear, apparently. Uh, my right ear, I made it myself. Uh, it's been with me for, uh, what, 33 years? Um, <laughs> well and uh, yeah, so, so far, so good. Um, it always equalizes. That's about all I can sort of say about my ear. I, I hear what's going on. Congratulations. One day your right ear might sponsor today's episode or an episode of Daily Deco. <laughs> um, what we're going to do, I think, guys, we're going to pick a product and then that's just, we're going to have a little moment to talk about a product. I think that's the way forward for now, isn't it, Mark? That's, that's kind of what I was hoping you were going to say yeah. at the beginning. Yeah, um, I know we spoke about it, but I thought, no, I'm just going to be stupid. Yeah, next time I'm just not going to sort of ask you. I'm just going <laughs> to pick a product. Just pick a product. <coughs> pick a product. Although isn't tomorrow... Yeah, tomorrow's going to be the Q&A, so tomorrow's not going to be sponsored. It is. Uh, so that'll be Monday's show. That's, oh, it's uh, Thursday, isn't it? No, <laughs> yeah, so this it goes out Thursday, Friday. Yeah, wow, okay. Yeah. Oh, wake up, Sean. It's, it's only the first week of the year. Don't worry, keep up. <coughs> I need to go on holiday. Um, the next, yeah, the next news story, uh, this one comes from... Instagram. Uh, Port, Port Phillip Bay in Victoria. And um, and this is footage showing uh, sort of scuba divers rescuing a, um, a Port Jackson shark, uh, which is one of the little guys, the little... Um, um, they've got a flat bottom and they've got like a really angular head, little spike in front of their dorsal fin. Um, and um, they kind of came across it, it was like lying down in the uh, in the seagrass and um, and yeah, it was caught on some ghost gear. So they had a fishing hook sort of trapped in its mouth and uh, a fishing line that had just tangled up in all the, uh, sort of the weeds and stuff so it couldn't go anywhere. So they went up to it, they uh, they kind of grabbed hold of it and it was still alive. So they went into action and uh, and they managed to uh, sort of cut the line and then eventually get the, uh, the hook out of its mouth and then released it and uh, it swam away quite happily. So again, this really just kind of reinforces the uh, sort of the ghost gear, just how dangerous it is uh, because if the scuba divers weren't there, that shark would have just eventually drowned and starved and died. Um, so yeah, it's kind of that sort of good feeling. Um, this actually, um, the dive was on December 31st, so this was a kind of a new year's um oh no sorry the the instagram video went live on instagram on december 31st so it was probably the day before or maybe that day um so um yeah it's it's just nice the one the one problem that i have with it is that they okay. did take their time with it um because of course they they all have like cameras and all that kind of stuff so um instead of just kind of like catching it cutting hook boom thing out done 
done low stress. They're kind of like holding onto the shark and they're really kind of dragging it out to get the pictures and the videos. I do understand that you kind of need to show these videos to sort of get that sort of point across in that, yeah, this is what's happening. And it kind of invokes that sort of emotional response in people. Uh, whereas if you did just kind of like release it as I probably would, then you don't have that sort of more um, sort of viral um, sort of yeah. effect. But uh, still, I, I think in my mind, it's just like, no, nah, just get the job done, release it and then tell the story. Uh, if you get pictures and videos, great, but they're just an added bonus. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, and also, it's it all about goes... the gram, isn't it? It's all about the gram. Yeah, yeah. I don't, mm, yeah. Um, <laughs> I also, it, the video, if you do actually kind of watch it, we'll link it down in the uh, description below. Uh, it really does emphasize the importance of keeping your cutting um, sort of utensils sharp because she's got this uh, kind of cutting hook and it takes a while for her to actually cut through this monofilament. Um, because you can see the rust is all sort of, uh, sorry, the blade is all sort of rusty and whatnot. So um, yeah, do definitely look after your cutting hook because um, yeah, you want it just to slice through whatever. What they should do filament. is make a bolt snap that has a jagged edge. So then, oh, multi. Yeah. <clears throat> there you go. Yeah, what's what's the worst that could happen with a, a bolt snap that has a sharp, <laughs> serrated cutting edge? No, it's Good perfect. Lord. <clears throat> well, you do it like the craft um, knives. So you've got a bolt snap and you've got a lever and then you, like a Stanley knife, just poke it out. <coughs> uh, the next news story is uh, is also about rescuing animals. Uh, this one's slightly larger. Uh, the other one you can hold in your hands, the uh, that little uh, Port Jackson shark. Um, but this one was a like they estimate it as a I think it was like a three or four year old uh, killer whale orca. Um, so this was on the Orkney Islands. I uh, I touched upon it yesterday. Um, I've actually read the story today and. Um, yeah, this was a, a juvenile and it was beached on the the shores of the Orkney Islands, which are, uh, if you've got sort of Scotland, they're, they're the closest uh, sort of off the kind of like northeast kind of coast. Um, and um, yeah, this poor little guy was just kind of caught out, um, went a little bit too shallow and uh, yeah, it was kind of trapped on the sand and the... Um, uh, the, the the charity, the BDMLR, uh, they managed to um, sort of keep it alive basically because it was on its side and the tide was coming in so they didn't want its like porthole and, and its mouth to be uh, sort of covered by the wave so it couldn't breathe. Um, so they managed to uh, sort of like manhandle it and uh, they got it onto like a stretcher and they managed to turn it in the right direction, sort of facing the ocean. And then as it got to a certain point, the, uh, the killer whale, the orca was just kind of like, you know what? Thanks guys, but I got this. And uh, he sort of got out and just, the last thing they, um, they were monitoring for a little bit. Um, and yeah, he's swimming quite uh, quite well out to sea. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I've seen, um, not in, um, in person, but in uh, documentaries, killer whales kind of like beaching themselves to be able to catch prey. And mm. uh, it does take some sort of practice. And um, I don't know if anyone else has said this, but um, in, in my opinion, um, it, it could just be that it was just a uh, sort of a practice run, just kind of gone wrong. He went a little bit too far, and uh, yeah, sort of got himself stuck. Because um, yeah, that's becoming a, a more and more common behaviour in uh, uh, in killer whales. He knew yeah, that lockdown, a national lockdown, was going to happen, Mark, and he wanted to go to the shops before they closed. The great <laughs> quickly. I need I need to pick up some toilet paper. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> uh, bless him. Um, they are taking yeah. over the UK, aren't they? Oh, killer whales. I'm hearing them a lot in the uh, in the news. Um, not always for the best news stories, um, but yeah, they're just coming out of the woodwork everywhere. It seems everywhere from South Africa to um, uh, to the Arctic Ocean. They are like just spreading around and like California they're going after um, sort of great white sharks and stuff and um, yeah South Africa are great whites in the Mediterranean they're going after boats um, in sort of Scottish waters and in the North Sea they're going after um, after the seals and stuff so uh, yeah again talking about killer whales so um, yeah, who knows who knows <clears throat> bless them yeah Bless them. But no, I do like the uh, the BDMLR. Um, I've um, 
we uh, I think we used to sponsor them at the uh, at the dive center that I used to work at. Um, the only downside is their um, their like sort of acronym is is so long to uh, to remember. And they um, the this this article it starts off the Orkney uh, BDMLR Marine Mammals Medics, or also known as MMMs. You're like, oh good lord. <laughs> Wow. The acronyms are just insane. <laughs> um, but they're at the bottom of the article, there's a, a link to the uh, the BDMLRs uh, Just Given page if you want to uh, sort of sponsor them. Yeah. Uh, throw them some cash. Uh, um, because, yeah, even during lockdown, they I'll are sort of going out and they are sort of helping. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll pin it. Coolio. Um, and a final news story. It's not really a news story. It's just something that sort of caught my eye and uh, I thought it was... A, Bit of fun. Um, now the headline caught my eyes and it was strikingly clear devil face found on a stingray in Tonga. And no. you're like, oh, okay, this is interesting. And uh, I sort of clicked on the video and um, and it plays for a bit. And it is very typical video of a uh, of like a stingray kind of like feeding on the bottom and you've got the other sort of pilot fish around it and um, trying to get some food. And you're like, oh, okay. And then eventually as the kind of the sand settles, you see what's best described as like a, uh, a sort of a front on like skull face. You can see the eyes, the kind of the nose pocket and the, uh, and the teeth as well. And you're like, okay, yeah, that is quite a cool kind of skull. I wouldn't describe it as strikingly clear devil face. <coughs> it's the end of times, but, Mark. Um, That's the sign. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought it, it would have come on a stingray? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's kind of cool. I, I do like it when uh, when animals have some very unique kind of markings like this. Um, but uh, again, it's just very clickbaity those uh, kind of titles. Hey, it but worked. It worked. You're, we're, you clicked the one on it thing, and we're talking about it. Yeah, the, the one thing that I know definitively does not work is um, the, uh, the enter key on whoever wrote this article because it's just <laughs> one solid paragraph of just words. And... Um, mm. and Basically, it's my job to read these articles, and I haven't, because it's just this wall of text, um, and it's like two pages long, I have and there's to not make. a. S <laughs> was it you? Uh, it was one of my dolphins. <laughs> yeah. He's just starting out, all right? He's just he's, starting out. He's doing well. He is doing well. <laughs> he's got a job um, at Yahoo News, but... so. <laughs> not too shabby. Well done, Frank. Um. <laughs> no, it wasn't Frank. It was Deirdre. Deirdre oh, the dolphin. Deirdre. Yeah. Mm. What's Frank up to? I haven't heard much from him. Uh, I can't tell you that, mate. He's had some tough times. He's, he's gone back he's to rehab. The bottle, is he? Yeah, he's gone oh, back to rehab. No, no it's not oh, the bottle not this Frank. time. Oh dear. <laughs> he got. He oh, got the seaweed. Yeah, the, the seaweed, mate. The pufferfish. <laughs> he got his blowhole infected. <laughs> there's there's nowhere good that we can segue from that um so um yeah uh if you have any questions uh it's probably a little too late um for tomorrow's uh q and a but uh, if you do have any uh, sort of scuba diving or even hiking and snowboarding or mountain biking because sean does a lot of that kind of stuff uh let us know down in the comments uh, sort of Put your questions down below um, and Sean will answer them on the spot. Um, <laughs> oh, great, thanks. The scuba diving ones, the scuba diving ones I'll cover because that's kind of my forte. Uh, but yeah, no, everything it's not, else. Mark. What um, you want about from, down in the back scuba diving? Yeah, from ad advanced algebra to, um, yeah, sort of complicated physics, um, Sean's your man. So, uh, yeah, he'll answer all those kind of questions. Um, if you have any um, sort of uh, sort of interesting news stories that you want us to cover, uh, if you've done anything interesting, you've just passed a certain course, let us know down in the comments below and we will mention those um yeah that's about it uh don't forget to visit today's sponsors uh my right ear yep. and um yeah thank you for watching and of course safe diving stay classy scuba divers